Bang. Needs knives. I'm Jared, my lovely wife, Kara, is at work, and today we are checking out the Jason Clark Spanish Tipped Razor. Here is the card. I just wanted you guys to see this beautiful packaging. Very nice leather. And let's get this baby out. I'm going to give it a little wipe down. Give this baby a quick look before we open it. There are a lot of great things about this knife, but as usual, there are some bad things. So I will be going over those after all the good things. Very, very nice. First flip. Or not first, but let's flip it. That was kind of a lazy flip. Bang. Very, very nice. Now, let's do the quick specs so that I can get into the good and bad. Now, this total length is six and seven eighths, which means it's literally this much under seven inches. It's practically seven inches with the blade length of two and three quarters. Now the cutting length is two and three quarters also. As if you notice, that's right by right here, and then I measure from here to here, but the cutting length goes up just a little bit, because you see how the Spanish tipped razor goes up just a little bit, so that's two and three quarters cutting length. A great size comparison is the Benchmade Bug Out. It's just a little bit bigger. Now, one that is practically the same exact size is the Civivi Elementum. You see, they are the exact same size. And then another one that's a really good size comparison is the Giant Mouse Ace Biblio. Now, one more. The Para, the Spider Co. Para 3 Lightweight. Their cutting length is practically identical. And the overall size is practically the same. Okay, so. This knife has a lot of great things going for it. But it also does have some bad things. It is very beautiful. This is Ladder Damascus. Black Damascus. Marbled carbon fiber and titanium. Titanium spring clip, very deep carry. And it is very, very smooth. Everything lines up very nicely. All the edges are knocked down very nicely. The ergos are absolutely fantastic fantastic on this knife i can't express how comfortable of a grip this is and it has to do with how wide it is with how the the, the thickness is here with the grooves very very nice now i know you see these little tiny screws now, these are very very tiny but i will say they're very deep i did have to take these ones off to get to the pivot and the pivot is actually a t10 which is very cool and you see this black tie mask is it doesn't fingerprint too bad but i still like to keep it nice and shined up for you guys especially for the camera but it's not bad at all this is very very smooth carbon fiber and like i said the grip on it just it's on another level it's very hard to explain without putting it in your hand in this little area right here, even though this has the jimping right there, it just, it locks you in. And then you also have the finger choil, which is very, very nice. So for bigger hands, even though I do have pretty big hands, and this isn't a big knife, but just because of the way the grip and the ergos are, it's fantastic. Also, you can wrap it around like this and get that tip going. Pinch it like this. Good close, very close push cuts if you want to. Or from right here. Now I barely use this thing. Um, 
I, I cut a piece of cardboard with it. That was it. I didn't sharpen it or anything like that. And if I did sharpen it, this is the reason why I didn't sharpen it because it could use a new edge. But if I did sharpen it, you'll notice that they put the plunge grind very, very close to the edge. So in order for me to sharpen it, I would probably cut a little sharpening choil right there, which wouldn't hurt it. And it would actually look proper. I think it would look better than it does now. But I have not sharpened it. Now the lock bar is pretty easy to get to. They left it up, or they didn't really cut out anything. But just the way it's chamfered, it's actually pretty easy. I feel like it is up just a little tiny bit higher than the rest, if you can see that. This thing is stupid smooth. Let's do the action. Now you can do the push button because it does have this jimping that works very nicely. Ridiculously smooth. Or the light switch, which is probably my pr preferred method next to the middle finger flick. Now you probably didn't see that coming, but this thing is very, very easy to middle finger flick. I just use this little space right here because of the grippiness and because if you really look there's actually a little shelf here you can barely see it because of the ladder damascus but there there it is you see the shelf so i use that little shelf to bang it out and it's very very easy i mean ridiculously easy but one of the reasons why is because the detent is light now you see it's not light enough to where I'm getting it out right there, but one good smack and it does pop out. Now I'm actually attempting to do that just by moving. It's not just going to come out. You see the stop pin right there. That's the stop pin for the open and the close. Listen to the detent. There is no um, detent lash. And man, that thing flies out. I mean, it, the action is amazing. But like I said, the detent is on the lighter side, so it's kind of easy to pop it out. But all you gotta do is just mean to flick it and it's coming out. <laughs> but yeah, the behind the edge thickness is 20 thousandths. Now that's on this mod or this knife. Now these are custom, so I'm sure they will all be different. You see it does get down to a nice fine tip here, which is very, very useful. Now I wouldn't use this thing to shave, but it's still a very useful blade shape, especially for EDC. And it's just a great size. Um, you can get really good grips on there. I mean, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, just a very beautiful knife. And I, like I said, this thing's ergos, because of all these little chamfering notches and everything, it just, your fingers just wrap right around. You can tell Jason Clark, like, he made sure that this thing just felt amazing in the hand. This clip, I don't even feel the clip. The clip does work well. In and out of the pocket very very nicely it is centered now I, it wasn't centered before but i like i guess i took that plate off and locked it up now it's got no blade play either way it's locked up very nicely and even though the pivot is very tight very very smooth now <laughs> let's get to some of the bad things now now one thing I would dread taking this thing all the way apart. Let me see if I can get a light on there. I can. It looks like these are loose bearings in there. And you can see how many there is. I mean, you can see them loose inside there. So that means if you take this thing apart, you're going to have a million little balls rolling around. You see them right there? There's a lot of them. Um, another thing is there's no steel lock bar insert this is titanium on titanium which isn't necessarily bad i haven't felt too much stick every time i feel stick it does go away very quickly so i do feel it every once in a while but you can see right there like i'm not getting any 
lock stick at all. Well, there's a little tick, but it's you can't feel it. You can just hear it. And that's pretty common with titanium frame locks, but that's why I, I prefer getting a lock bar insert. Very, very smooth. Stupid smooth. Now I'm probably going to have to put some Loctite on this pivot. Also, there's no over travel stop. I don't like that at all because with a titanium frame lock with no lock bar insert, when it does get stick and you have to push it over, you tend to push it over pretty hard and you can unspring this lock. Now, I'm just pretty careful what I do is if it ever does get stick, and I'm not talking about just specifically this knife, what I do with most knives, when it does get stick, I'll put my finger there so it'll hit my finger. Or like put my finger right here when I'm unlocking so my finger acts as an over travel stop. It's not hard to do, but you know, it's just something to think about. Um, some more bad things. This, this clip, even though it does work fantastic, I would have preferred a thicker one. Thicker in this dimension right here. It's pretty springy and it'd be very easy to bend this thing up. I mean, it'd be very, very easy to bend this thing up. Now you see how they looped it over to right there and they got the screw right there. Um, yeah, I just, I would prefer a thicker clip. It does give a little bit of movement, not much, but is what it is another bad thing this is a steel backspacer this is not titanium i would have preferred that to be titanium it's stainless steel i'm guessing they did that for the weight because the weight because of the blade it's blade heavy so it actually teeters right there now if that was titanium this thing would just it just fall right there you know like but because of it having that steel backspacer is pretty balanced. But I would still kind of prefer it to be titanium. I mean, if everything else is titanium. But I know they probably did that for weight. Um, now, me personally, I'm not a huge fan of Damascus. But I do like it from time to time. I do think it looks very nice on some knives and this is definitely one of them. This does look very sexy, it looks very cool. Now, I I couldn't find what type of Damascus this is. I know it's called ladder Damascus, but Damascus isn't a kind of steel. It's a process that you do with steels and it's the outcome of different steels forming together. But I could not find what type of steels they used in this Damascus. Now mind you, they do, a lot of companies do that. A lot of companies, they'll just say Damascus and they don't really tell you what kind it is, but I prefer to know what kind of Damascus it is. Um, it also lets you know like what type of care to do, you know, to put on it, um, you know, how easily it's gonna rust or not rust. Um, and, you know, it's just nice, it's nice to know what the main component is. Usually, at least, it, like, they'll say, like, the main steel that's in there. But uh, this one, I could not find what kind or what was into this Damascus. But we still have a couple more bad things. So, one more is... Look at the backspacer. I'm going to shine a light in there. Hopefully it'll come up. Do you see that little nick right there? That's the tip of the blade. So it doesn't, like, when it smacks. Now, if it's just sitting there, it's not hitting. But when you put pressure, it pushes. And that goes to the next bad thing. This stop pin is so tiny. If he would have used a bigger stop pin, you, he could have made it stop like right here, 
you know, I guess the detent ball would have to, I'm sorry about the blurriness, the detent ball would have to move and everything, and things would have to change, but I would prefer just a little bit bigger stop pin. I don't like little stop pins, especially with heavy blades like this. Now, after one sharpening, one sharpening, it wouldn't do that. So, you know, I don't know, it's not that big of a deal. And like I said, it doesn't touch unless if I push on it, or if it smack shut a little bit i can feel it hitting right there and that's where that line comes from right there at the tip um very blurry <laughs> but it's very very smooth like i said i do i do prefer bigger hardware but it's at least deep hardware man my damn camera there we go. Let me stop moving. All this shiny stuff is trying to pick everything up. Um, so the, the hardware is small, but at least it's deep hardware. Um, everything looks really good, and it does function very good. But it's a custom, so those are little details that I think should, you know, like all the fit and finish is so extraordinary that... I, I feel like these other little details should have been hit. It shouldn't be hitting the backspacer at all. That's a huge, huge mistake. Um, now, the whether or not, you know, like the stop pin, it's not that big of a deal, but it's because the stop pin's so small that it's able to kind of push itself. Um, yeah, it's a great knife. I mean, it is a really great knife, but, you know, it's it's a custom. And I don't want to people to look at this and be, you know, and think anything bad. This is an extraordinary knife. It is well done. I can tell Jason Clark makes amazing knives, and I would love to check out more of his knives. Ugh, that action is just stupid smooth. But... The, you know, I wonder how long it'll last without a, a steel insert. Um, the clip, I, I would hope the clip wouldn't get sprung up. Now, especially if I was going to carry it or if Kara was going to carry it. You know, I don't I don't know. You know, I mean, it's I have carried it. Don't get me wrong. I've carried it and it was fine. It's fine. But this thing is not a, a very strong, reliable clip. But it's still an extraordinary knife. It's very, very nice. And very useful, too. I mean, it really is. Some people don't prefer these uh, razor-type blade shapes. But until you use one, I mean, these things are very, very useful. A lot more useful than you would think. But... Yeah, a lot of great things on this knife, but there still are, you know, quite a few bad things, but it's still an extraordinary knife. Peace!